In this video, I wanted to showcase a CTF called Advanced Screening. So this is one of the CTFs that featured within the NahamCon 2025. And I would highly recommend going through these because they are pretty fun and they're very relevant to some of the stuff that you find in today based on my experience from pen testing. So to give you a bit of background into advanced screening, it's on face value just a regular website. However, when you dig a little bit deeper, you can then discover some client side code. In this case, it was an app.js file, which revealed a few API endpoints. Once I knew how these worked, I could call them individually and then brute force myself a valid user and once I had the valid user I could generate myself a token which would ultimately give me the flag. Okay so let's dive in. Okay so the first thing I've done is opened up a Chromium web browser from Burp Suite. Now this for me and many others is probably an easier way to do things because you don't have to deal with the burp certificates. It's not too much of a chore but it just kind of makes life a little bit easier if you can just run the inbuilt Chrome Chromium browser within burp. So what I've done is started running the hub and then it's given me this subdomain here. So if we just go to that subdomain there you can see that we have the Bounty Hunter movie title page and then we have an employee advanced screening where you can enter an email. So like, let's just try with um, like test at test.com, see how that responds. And then we get like a failed to send, please try again. So let's just intercept that request and see why that has failed. So you can see there's my request in JSON format. So if I just um, go to intercept the response to that, we get a message saying that only email addresses from movieservice.ctf are allowed. Okay. So let's just try like test at movieservice.ctf and then forward that. We did get a failed to send but it did open up a six digit code option as well so let's just try like one two three four five six. We get an invalid code but we're not even sure if this is even a valid username so it probably would take quite a while to brute force this so it's worth digging around the app and just seeing if there's anything else before disappearing down any rabbit holes. So let's just go to our target and then we have our home page here and then we have the API which has the uh, email API which, which we discovered when trying to log in with our test at test.com and then we have some JS files and um, we have app.js so if we just have a look at the response to app.js you can see that it's listed some of the API endpoints so we have the API email one which we already know about and then we've got API validate which I assume is the six digit code and then we've got um, one that we haven't seen yet called API forward slash screen token. Now that's a post request and the content type that it accepts is JSON. So let's try browsing to that one directly. Okay, so when we browse to that, we get an error missing user ID. So missing what error would happen user ID if there. So let's try and intercept that. 
and then send that over to our repeater. From the app.js it mentioned that we needed a post request and also um, the data needed to be JSON. So if we go to change request method you can see that we get like a post and then let's add our user underscore ID that it's asking for and say equals let's say one and then we need to change this to JSON format so change the body encoding to JSON so let's just send that and see what happens so we get like a 400 bad request however it does show that the account status has been deactivated so let's try and iterate through some of these user IDs and see if we can find a valid account so next we can just go to send to intruder and then set our placeholder and then the type of payload that we want in this case uh, we just want numbers so uh, let's go numbers and say from 1 to 20 sequential and then start our attack and you can see that it's already finished with our 20 requests and what we're looking for is any sort of anomalies between these so one that instantly stands out is the status code so a 200 or a 201 in this case means that we have found a valid user so let's go and have a look at the response there you can see that it has produced us a hash here so if we go back to our app.js file you can see that it has also leaked a uh, token area where you can go to forward slash screen and then put your key value which is the token that we've just created so let's just try that let's, let's copy forward slash screen key and we get an invalid key however we can just go back to our intruder attack here copy that hash and then see if that works and then you can see that we have actually solved it and we've got the flag right here so I just wanted to add a quick addendum where some of you may have noticed that I'm using Burp Suite Professional which isn't rate limited when you use the intruder functionality so I'm not expecting anyone to go out and buy Burp Suite uh, Professional however the same thing can be achieved by using their community edition it does rate limit you for by I think it's like one request per second however in this example where we've only gone through like 20 different user IDs it shouldn't hinder you in any way with that said though if you want to utilize this for future CTFs where there might be like a much larger range of numbers that you need to cycle through there are some other options as well so firstly if you wanted to stick with burp then you have the community edition which has additional plugins such as turbo intruder and that will allow you to brute force without any form of rate limiting whatsoever other options include kaido which is a fairly new web app proxy and i've heard some pretty good things about it i have used it a little bit myself personally i prefer to stick with what i know uh, but you know that might change along the road and then finally you should also consider creating your own tools for when existing ones just don't quite do exactly what you need so in this instance I've created a Python script 
which will go through users 1 to 100 and it looks for a 201 response so once it's found a 201 response it will then print out that hash so let me just try and run that again you can see that it finds our user ID 7 and the hash is discovered almost instantly and then the process finishes shortly afterwards so I would definitely advise trying to put something like this together you can use LLMs such as ChatGPT to help you out however I would advise only using these as a tool to kind of help you out a little bit you want to be ideally putting these together mostly yourself and just using LLMs to kind of take some of the heavy lifting out of it hope this helps let me know your thoughts in the comments and I'll see you in the next one